Mars, the red planet we've long thought of as dry, barren, and lifeless, but what if that wasn't always true? What if beneath its dusty surface, oceans once stretched across its northern plains, vast, deep, and teeming with possibilities? The Chinese rover Zhu Rong may have just given us the first strong evidence of these ancient Martian oceans, a discovery that could rewrite the planet's history and even our search for life beyond Earth. In the next few minutes, we'll dive into what Zhu Rong found, why scientists are stunned, and what it tells us about a time when Mars might have been more Earth-like than we ever imagined. The idea that Mars once had oceans isn't new. Scientists have been exploring it for decades. Most of the evidence so far has come from indirect observations, which can be interpreted in different ways. Because of this, some researchers have dismissed the idea of Martian oceans altogether. Earlier this year, a major breakthrough changed the conversation. It didn't come from NASA or ESA, but from China's Zhu Rong rover. The data it collected over several years may finally settle the debate, reshaping how we understand Mars's history and pointing to the most promising places to look for signs of alien life. Water is one of the most valuable substances in the universe. It covers 70% of Earth's surface and makes up 60% of our bodies. It flows in rivers, fills lakes and oceans, and is essential for life as we know it. Yet, despite how common it is on Earth, water is surprisingly rare across our solar system. Mars shows evidence of water dating back 4.45 billion years. Tiny crystals in Martian meteorites reveal that hot, water-rich fluids once existed there. Martian soil contains ferrohydrite, a mineral that only forms in the presence of water. We've also found signs of ancient rivers and polar ice sheets that could have been as large as the United States. Some forms of life might still survive under the ice caps, but ancient shorelines could have been even more promising. They may have supported entire ecosystems, leaving behind traces, biosignatures, that tell us about Mars's past habitats. Shorelines offer ideal conditions for life to start. Evaporation concentrates organic molecules, minerals provide surfaces for chemical reactions, and energy from sunlight, heat, and chemical gradients can drive the formation of complex molecules like RNA and proteins. Rivers, by comparison, are too fast-moving and diluted. They constantly wash materials downstream, making it hard for the necessary chemical reactions to happen. In this way, the calm, nutrient-rich edges of Martian oceans may have been the perfect cradle for life to emerge. If scientists could find proof that Mars once had standing water, such as a lake or an ocean, it would greatly improve their chances of discovering traces of ancient microbial life. The Chinese Tianwen-1 mission may have just provided the most convincing evidence yet for these ancient Martian oceans. This mission is the first to collect direct data from a suspected ocean region on the ground, giving strong support to the theory that Mars once had shorelines. Tianwen-1 began its 202-day journey to Mars on July 23, 2020, carrying an orbiter, a lander, and the Zurong rover. Its mission was designed to explore Mars's geology, climate, and potential for life. The spacecraft studied the surface and underground of Utopia Planitia, a region thought to be an ancient ocean basin based on satellite observations. It monitored the planet's climate and weather, including dust storms and magnetic field changes, and searched for evidence that the area might once have had conditions suitable for life. On February 10, 2021, Tianwen-1 entered orbit around Mars. Engineers spent three months testing the spacecraft, adjusting its orbit from equatorial to polar, and preparing for its main scientific operations. On May 14, the lander successfully touched down on Mars, and a week later, the Zurong rover was deployed. This made China only the second nation, after the United States, to successfully land and operate a rover on Mars. Beyond scientific discovery, the mission represented a major step in demonstrating China's ability to carry out complex space missions independently without relying on foreign navigation or communication systems. 
The mission, named Tianwen, which means questions to heaven, also lays the groundwork for future projects, including a Mars sample return mission and the possibility of sending humans to Mars by 2033. The 240kg Zurong rover landed in Utopia Planitia, the largest known impact basin in the solar system. This is the same region where Viking missions landed nearly 50 years ago. Interest in the area surged after a 2016 NASA discovery revealed massive underground ice roughly equal to the volume of Lake Superior. To explore this promising region, the Zurong rover was equipped with 13 scientific instruments. These included radars, like the ROPA ground-penetrating radar, which can study up to 100 meters below the surface, spectrometers to analyze the composition of soil and rocks, including laser-induced breakdown and infrared spectrometers, cameras to capture detailed images, map terrain and assist with navigation, and environmental monitors to track climate, atmospheric conditions, magnetic fields, and space radiation. The rover even carried a deployable wireless selfie camera, producing some of the mission's most iconic images. These photos traveled hundreds of millions of kilometers through space as radio singles, which scientists then decoded into the colorful images we see today. The journey of Zurong selfies highlights the importance of careful data handling. Just as the signals required proper decoding to reveal the images, people can protect their personal information online through encryption, keeping it safe from unwanted access. With all its scientific instruments ready, what did Zurong actually uncover about Mars's ancient coastline that previous missions missed? To understand this, we need a quick geography lesson. On Earth, sediment, particles of sand, silt, or rock, is moved around by wind, water, and ice. Rivers carry sediment, glaciers drag it downhill, and eventually it settles in calmer areas like river deltas, lakes, oceans, floodplains, or the base of hills. Sediment can also accumulate along coastlines, particularly in the foreshore, the area between high and low tide lines. This zone is constantly changing, with sediment being added or removed depending on wind, waves, tides, weather events, and the type of particles present. Foreshore slopes vary. Beaches made of fine sand are usually gently sloped, while beaches with larger stones or cobbles can be steeper, sometimes up to 20 degrees. These sloping layers are like a record of long-term changes, showing the balance between sediment supply, wave energy, and water levels. They can be preserved in the geological record for millions of years. On Mars, Shurong studied the subsurface using its ROPA ground-penetrating radar. The radar sends radio waves into the ground, which bounce back when they hit a boundary between different materials, like fine sediment transitioning into coarser sand. This creates a visible reflector in the radar images. What caught the team's attention wasn't just that they were seeing reflectors, but that all 76 of them sloped in the same direction, between 6 and 20 degrees. By analyzing the data, they found that 10 to 35 meters below the surface lay a 1.3 kilometer stretch of terrain sloping gently toward the lowlands. It seemed too consistent to be a coincidence. Could this be the long sought evidence of an ancient shoreline on Mars? The team compared it to buried beaches on Earth and found a striking resemblance to the Bay of Bengal, which they even highlighted in their research paper. One co-author explained that, while it's a simple structure, it shows there had to be waves, a nearby river supplying sediment, and these processes had to be ongoing for a significant period. Mars's sun and its larger moon, Phobos, could also have influenced tides shaping this ancient ocean shoreline. The team considered other explanations for the sloping layers they found, but none fit the data. Sand dunes or lava flows, they realized, would create slopes pointing in different directions. Yet the Zhurong radar consistently showed all the reflectors sloping the same way. That pattern matched what we see along coastal foreshores on Earth, where tides, waves, and wind constantly shaped the shoreline. This discovery added weight to the idea that Mars once had active, dynamic beaches, places where water once moved, pushed sediments around, and shaped the land. For decades, the question of Mars's oceans has divided scientists. Evidence often seemed ambiguous, with some researchers dismissing possible shorelines as artifacts or blurry images. Climate models struggled to explain how liquid water could have existed billions of years ago when the sun was about 25% dimmer than it is today, far too weak to keep the red planet warm. Yet geological science suggests rivers, lakes, and perhaps even oceans once flowed across Mars. This contradiction is known as the faint young sun paradox. 
If the sun wasn't providing enough heat, the warmth must have come from Mars itself, specifically its atmosphere. Scientists have proposed three main theories to solve this paradox. The first is that Mars was warm and wet for extended periods. Its atmosphere, rich in greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and water vapor, might have trapped enough heat to keep liquid water flowing for millions of years. This could explain the evidence of rainfall, lakes, and oceans. But there's a catch. Carbon dioxide and water vapor alone probably couldn't generate enough warmth. Other gases, such as methane, ammonia, or hydrogen, would have been needed, but they are unstable and hard to maintain over long stretches of time. The second theory is that Mars was warm and wet only occasionally. Massive volcanic eruptions or asteroid impacts could have released huge bursts of heat or greenhouse gases, melting ice and producing rivers and lakes for relatively short periods. But we don't know if these fleeting warm spells could have been frequent or long enough to carve the valleys and fill the lakes we see today. The third possibility is that Mars spent most of its history as a frozen world. Glaciers and ice sheets dominated the landscape, melting only under specific conditions like shifts in Mars's orbit or sudden heating events. This scenario could explain why the planet shows evidence of both glacier activity and flowing water. But the question remains, what melted enough ice often enough to cause the erosion we observe? In truth, none of these scenarios perfectly solve the puzzle. Even with compelling shoreline evidence, scientists still can't fully explain how water could have lasted on early Mars. Cracking the faint young sun paradox may hold the key to understanding whether the planet was ever truly habitable. So it's far too early to imagine Martian resorts or billionaires lounging on red planet beaches. The reality is that we still need more data. NASA had hoped to launch a sample return mission around 2027 or 2028, with the first samples arriving in the early 2030s. Those rocks could finally shed light on Mars's ancient climate and help settle the debate. However, budget issues have already delayed the mission to 2040, and recent proposed cuts could even threaten its completion. Until then, the story of Mars's oceans remains an open and tantalizing mystery. Even though Zurong was only built to operate for 93 Earth days, it far exceeded expectations, sending back valuable data for an incredible 358 days before going dormant on May 20, 2022. Scientists had hoped it would wake up again in December 2022, once temperatures and sunlight were right, but it never did. Too much dust had piled up on its solar panels. Looking ahead, Zurong's discoveries leave us with even bigger questions. If Mars once had long-lasting oceans, where did all that water go? How did the planet shift from a world that might have supported life to the frozen, barren desert we see today? Could Earth face a similar fate someday? And if life ever existed along those ancient Martian shores, might some traces of it still be hiding beneath the surface? The answers aren't here yet, but one thing is certain future missions to the Red Planet will continue to peel back the layers of its mysterious past. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Until next time, keep looking up.